a little bit of a, of a cheat to skirt around the rules a little bit, get a second restricted legendary on your team. It's just a little bit difficult to perform. It's a very big guess to make. Absolutely. It's very much so like a, a certain position has to happen. A few things have to go your way to kind of get in position to allow for the ditto to thrive. But we did see when we had Michael Holloway on, uh, on stream yesterday, game one was a little bit tougher. Did manage to get the ditto out, but... Won the match, but it was scrappy. It got down to the last Pokemon. Game 2, however, was an absolute clinic as to showing exactly what happens when you get it right. And that ditto, switching over to, I believe it was a Calyrex Ice Rider. On, so on was, launch, too. <laughs> yeah. Immediately, yeah, right off of turn 1, you had Mar Maridon and Cali Ice both on the field at the exact same time. And that is absolutely terrifying. But what could be even funnier is we could have a setup here where we have two Maridons on one side. That'd be very, very hilarious if we do end up getting a situation like that. That would be absolutely hilarious. I'm almost hoping we see it because I want to know how that one would play out. And now looking at the rest of the team, Ditto is always a risky pick, but here I don't even know if it's risky. All of these are very self-sufficient while also having a little bit of support capabilities over on Carter's side. All very strong Pokemon, and that's always a little bit scary when you're going in up against a Ditto. And actually, Carter's got some tools here where in a worst-case scenario, um, he can absolutely scrap his way back out even if the Ditto does manage to steal his legendary, of course, his Maridon, because he is um, playing with that uh, Landorus Incarnate, which of course ground type does not care about your electric attacks. You just got to make sure you can play around a Draco Meteor. So um, could be an option there if all of a sudden, not just for uh, Michael Holloway's uh, ride on itself, but if it did get dittoed over, you do have a way to at least eliminate it. You have some options, but still, like, not a guaranteed thing. I think another one you're eyeing if you're Michael is you kind of want to take that Landorus, have the extra ground pressure against your enemies we ride on. But there we see, we're right in the game. Carter launching out the Chihu and Incineroar. And we have an Incineroar Ditto going on here. And then we finally have that Ursaluna Blood Moon. Which is kind of funny that we're seeing it first here. Um, over the past couple of days, Ursaluna Blood Moon has been basically one of the top five characters in terms or top five pokemon rather in terms of usage but i feel like we don't see it on stream that often or at least that's successful on stream that often like we know what it wants to do it wants to be firing off those really really powerful blood moons and uh, hyper voices but it's not really been able to get the job done but we'll have to see this time by here and just waiting to just get this one on the way that chiyu incineroar is going to Make this a bit of a slow start, but maybe that Chiyu can find some value somewhere. Maybe it can, but we're going to see a swap out on the Ursa Luna, trying to get that Intimidate off of them. Going to switch to Freergraph, get a little bit of a setter going here. Let's see. Oh, we're already seeing a Terra be committed by Carter. I think it's on to, yep, that's going to be on to the Chiyu. It's going to be Terra Ghost, maybe expecting the Ursa Luna to fire at it. Not gonna happen though, so I'm wondering what this has up its sleeve. Yeah, this covers two things. It covers the fake outs, and now it no longer is gonna do anything. But also, the switch over into the Furigraph denies it anyway. But uh, now it's gonna be the overheat right into Furigraph. That is some major damage, but now you have a little bit of a weaker Chiyu in this instance. The knockoff actually into the Chiyu was probably initially just to try to get rid of the. Uh, Get rid of the choice scarf, but because it's harassed into ghosts, does make it super effective and nearly one shots Chiyu. Yeah, already Chiyu, two Pokemon on its last legs after a turn, but you know, this Frigoraph still don't know if it's gonna get much use. It could try and helping hand here to knock out this in this enemy in scenario because you want something that's gonna move quick, get the priority going. Going for foul play or trick room would be a very big gamble. 100% here, and Frigraph being so low is definitely scary. It looks like he's gonna, or is debating on try it anyway. Going to opt for something different. Chiyu, of course, still gets the move first compared to anything else on that field. Overheat, once again, does not matter if you're minus, t uh, minus two when you only have less than 10% to dig through. Is able to get the elimination there onto that Frigraph this time by. Parting shot gonna be going on over into the Incineroar. Gonna see Carter switch out to something in just a moment's time. We will probably see the switch out. 
but will this be into the Maraidon? Will this be into something else? That's the question we're all asking ourselves. Carter's considering it very carefully. It's a very important choice. Both players switching in a new Pokemon here. This could change the shape of the game by a large margin. Just looking over at what Michael has, though. Still has that Ursula and Blood Moon if he wants to keep his last in his back pocket, but I think we all know it's most likely the restricted. Okay, so we're actually going to see the uh, Iron Hands come out to play. Going to immediately get the knockoff and lose that Assault Vest. So this is going to make it actually kind of brutal for that Iron Hands, regardless if it's the Ursa Luna or the Maridon. Losing that Assault Vest and losing all that special defense versus either of these Pokemon could be absolutely devastating as we are going to see the Maridon come on out to play. And it will start that Hydrant Engine to get that Electric Terrain up. And it will also, uh, as we see here, get that Quark Drive right in for Iron Hand's attack. However, Michael is really banking on the fact that both of his Pokemon are much faster than that Iron Hand's. Maybe if you double up into it, you can knock it out before it gets a chance to uh, make a move. For sure. Now, looking at this, seeing the Terra Ghost over on the Incineroar. Trying to maybe go for trying to take a hit from this Iron Hands. And now they're just trying to take out this Iron Hands before it can get going. I mean, bringing out the Maraidon, a risky pick, it activates the, the ability of Iron Hands there. The Quark Drive is now in effect. Oh. That is going to be actually a Terrestrialization for the Incineroar over to the Ghost type. We are seeing this pretty consistently across the board for a lot of these Pokemon. Expecting the Fake Out to come out, it was not going to actually come out here, but the Iron Hands is going to go down. Not very effective, but does not matter. That Electro Drift, of course, powered up by that Electric Terrain is just enough damage in its own right to get the knockout. A little Snarl going to be coming out here from Carter's Chiyu is going to try to suppress some of that damage but not going to be the case flare blitz coming out here from incineroar it's going to get the elimination as well which means this is going to put carter down to his final pokemon yeah down to his last and most likely going to be the maridon as we usually see the people taking the restricted there it is maridon getting the electric chain already up though in the ditto getting incineroar out here as well I said final Pokemon, but I guess the Incineroar is still hiding there. There's always a surprise Incineroar. <laughs> always. Timonade comes through. I think we're going to have to see the parting shot from from uh, Michael there, potentially. Or maybe he's going to go for a knockoff on the Maridon. As that Maridon is carrying choice specs, so he doesn't want it to have that extra little bit of damage there. This could be messy though, because I know Carter's going to be tempted to go for the Draco Meteor into the slot for Maridon. And actually expecting it, just not Draco Meteor, actually, it's Dragon Pulse. So it is immediately wow. going to wipe out the Ursa Luna. Actually, it's a huge value here. Taking care of that, that would have been a threat to uh, the Incineroar as well. So taking that off the board so quickly, Incineroar taking some massive damage here. And actually, Carter is fighting back, playing this very, very well. You're gonna get hit with the knockoff. Sure, you're gonna lose the specs. Sure, you'll lose a little bit of damage, but at least you didn't get dropped by like two special attack stages like you would have if you were carrying Draco Meteor instead. Yeah, this is looking very, very careful. I think potentially Michael may be able, if he can outspeed the enemy ride on, he can maybe take it out first and save the hit, but it's still gonna be a massive risk. He has Draco Meteor, he'll be able to take it out. But do you want to get that special attack drop? Do you think you could maybe take a hit here first? There's a lot of choices to make. But I think Draco Meter is the safer choice here. You know, it makes sense. Honestly, you just switched in your Incineroar. You have Fake Out available. If you just shut down the opposing Maraidon with the Fake Out, you could absolutely shut down and basically get to hit it for free. However, I'm sure Carter knows that. And it is actually his Maridon that's faster and without a fake out that actually leaves Michael down to a very, very low HP Incineroar. Carter, from what looks like a terrible position, has actually fought his way into victory. Yeah, it takes him down. And now from the down and out, Carter stuck through it through all the way through the end and now he's going to be taking the first point in the set props to carter an amazing amazing will to withstand all of those hits that michael dished out 
Yeah, absolutely fantastic job. And honestly, might be a little bit of the momentum boost that he needed there, of course. Having a couple of hard matchups in rounds one and two, looking for the first win of the tournament. And being able to get the one on the board right just like that could get you the momentum, a little bit of confidence in your picks and see if you can keep rolling from here. But Michael, though, a little bit back to the drawing board, which is a little bit odd. I feel like that one was definitely in range, but a few things just did not quite go his way. I'm not sure if you really need to make any changes, but just try again. Exactly. Try, try and get, put it back up on the drawing board. And correct me if I'm wrong, we didn't see the ditto come Not this effect. time, no. Not that time. Yeah, opted to leave it back at home, and it depends on a little bit of conditioning. I suppose, to say the least, to kind of use like an FGC term. Because you want to set your opponent up to the position to where you could then drop the ditto and kind of get the finisher. We did see, of course, like we were saying in the tournament yesterday, where he did lead with it, but it was only after game one where um, basically put his opponent into a spot where he felt like they had to move quickly, get the legendary out first. He kind of conditioned him into uh, a solid spot there for ditto, but going into this game, I'm curious as to how they will respond to that. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Even if the ditto doesn't come into effect, there's so much on this team that could even be swapped out here. The Fergie Ref really didn't get much value overall, so you might even see that one switch out for the Whimsicott, a little mm -hmm. bit more of consistent support potential, because that Tailwind would have came in clutch there, especially near the end when you needed to outspeed the enemy right on. Yeah, and that's where an instance where I'm trying to think to myself, was there something that I was missing in that instance? Because, like, whether it was speed tie or not, which of course we don't necessarily know, but you would have, in theory, guaranteed the hit onto the Maridon had the fake out had come out, but wasn't quite the case. It may have been speed tie, maybe not, not quite sure, but game number two underway. We're going to see how, oh, Wibsy is going to be making a play here this time by alongside Blood Moon or Saluna, but we're seeing Tornadus Chiyu as well on the opposite side, so both teams leading with uh, different leads. Yeah, Wimps got already going for the Tailwind. We're seeing the Blood Moon being hovered here, but Earth Power could just be as effective. Shutting down that Chiyu would be imperative. Yeah, that would definitely threaten a full knockout, and this Chiyu is not running a Focus Sash. I believe that is a Choice Scarf, so could very well threaten the one-hit knockout here. If, uh, if it hits right. And one of the few Pokemon that could resist that Earth Power from being swapped in, unless there's a Landorus in the back pocket here, that Tornadus is already out here, so there's only a one in five chance of that happening. Okay, it's Rastalization actually gonna be coming out here for whom? It is gonna be the Chiyu actually recognizing the threat of that Earth uh, Power from Ursaluna Blood Moon. Going to at least get that away so that this is a neutral hit, but is not going to save it for sure. This is still going to be some solid damage across the board here. Tailwind's coming up, but it's still going to just be answered immediately. So basically, still at a standstill, still evened out. Snarl going to be the answer here for Carter to at least do a little bit of damage to everybody and also reduce that special attack to make this Blood Moon actually hit just a little bit less. But this thing is so strong, and that was probably the difference maker between living that one. Yeah, wow. Just a little bit of a difference there, and he makes sure he makes it through. Uh -oh. Now Ursaluna going to have to go on the defense of try and get the lay of land by another turn. But this Chiyu is looking to take something down here and now. Okay, Whimsicott is thinking of something cheeky here. Of course, did, I believe, select the Encore. And if that went into the Tornadus slot, that means that Tornadus is just going to be sitting there firing off Tailwinds the entire time because he can't do anything else. But a wise switch here from Carter, maybe recognizing the threads. Of course, they, this is open team sheets. So it would have recognized that Encore on the Whimsicott's move list and switching it over to Maridon while the Ursaluna protects itself. Ursula protected now. Encore going out on the Chiyu. It's going to be locked in for a while now. Going to use that Snarl. Not a, not the worst move to be locked into, but also not going to be your main damage dealer that's, at all. That's exactly the problem. Like, okay, sure, you're, you're going to be doing a little bit of chip damage, but normally you use that to set up the nuke after the fact. So, okay, you can set up Maridon, but you cannot set up yourself anymore. You're just going to be chip, chip, chipping away there with that Snarl. Might opt to switch out after 
getting on court, but at least there is still a pretty solid threat there for Carter that Maridon is absolutely ready to just run amok on one of these Pokemon. Exactly, but with the Earth Power and the Moonblast being threatened, it oh. is a week to two of these, and the so Snarl close. comes through, barely does not take out the Ursaluna. That might have not done it, but this Dragon Pulse absolutely will. So there it is. A little bit of a setup, and the partner finishes off the job. What is Whimsicott up to? Moonblast right into the Maridon. Don't sleep on Whimsicott's damage. It actually can chunk, and it did get the special attack drop on top of that as well. Oh, there it is. Oh, this is exactly what we were looking for. Here comes Ditto. <laughs> correct positioning and everything and now there are two Maridons on the field and potentially three if this Whimsicott somehow falls yeah now Whimsicott's just going to be doing a little bit more damage to the Maridon possibly or just trying to keep itself alive just being as supportive as possible this is exactly what Michael was looking for found his opportunity has that extremely powerful Maridon on his squad and probably has yet another Maridon in the back if he needs it <laughs> yeah I think we saw that Maridon in the back there so still had could, we could have three Maridons on the field potentially if this one <laughs> manages to stay up which would be absolutely insane but okay. now we're going to see the withdraw doesn't want to go in through the ditto because the dragon beats the dragon. Now Incineroar are going to be coming out, getting that attack lowered even further. Now threatening the parting shot as well. Incineroar, very good choice here, but will this Dragon Pulse take him out? No, it doesn't do all too much. Yeah, but Incineroar is surprisingly tanky here. That is going to be another Snarl. I mean, granted this Chiyu did get on court, but it is making the most out of all of these snarls and making it so that these shots do just tickle at the end of the day. Granted, Chiyu is finally going to fall. It was sitting at like 5% HP. So fair enough. Good job, little fish. You did your job. And let's see what the rest of the team can do. Yeah, it's finally down. No more snarls. No more special attack drops coming out from that Chiyu. But now, there's a choice to be made here. Tornado is going to be very weak into this electric type unless you terastalize. We have to keep that in mind. Neither player has committed the Terra type yet. The Chiyu, though, I believe was a ghost type at the end of that one. So if, yeah, so oh, you're right. Saying, you're correct. If Tornadus does come out, it is going to be threatened immediately by both of these Pokemon in one sense or another. Pure damage from the Maridon and then eventually the Encore from Whimsicott. But that being said, both of these players do have their Tailwind, so it's probably going to be another scenario where both end up Tailwinding at the same time. But actually, Maridon is going to be the one to come out to play here. So this puts Michael in a fantastic position where that dittoed, um, <laughs> dittoed Maridon could get the extra boost from Whimsicott immediately get the Tailwind and for sure have the faster Maridon. However, the move for the fans might be a little bit different. Yeah, this is going to be an exciting round here. A lot is going to be decided by players. Pretty much dead even across the board right now. Seeing Terra be committed there. Going to Terra Ghost on the copy Maridon. And try and prep that Dragon Pulse as well. Beautiful play by Michael. There it is. There's the Terra. Let's see how this one plays out. I mean, that's the interesting thing about it being the Ditto as well, right? Normally, Maridons would just go Terra Electric for bonus damage. But because it was the Ditto, the Ditto does keep its Terra type, which in this instance is Ghost, which stops a fake out, which means in theory, this Tailwind comes out for free as well. And this Maridon gets the strike first. Yeah, there it is. There's the Dragon Pulse. Let's see it. And it's super effective taking oh. down the Maridon. And now in a cruel twist of fate, Michael has two Maridons and Carter has none. And Donald's going to be up to this Tornadus and this Incineroar in the back to try and make the play happen. But it is just such an awkward spot here for Carter to somehow strike through. Neither of these Pokemon very strong in regards to DPS, in regards to damaging per se. Making sure to chip away. Whimsicott might end up falling here, but then what? You're going to deal with two Maridons? That's just going to be an absolute rough spot to go through, and chip damage is not going to save you. Yeah, no amount of chip damage will save you here. Whimsicott using the Protect, going to be protected by a lot of things here. 
Now the Dragon Pulse coming out, gonna do good damage out on that Incineroar, but not enough to take it out. Gonna trigger that Incineroar's Berry there, gonna get a lot of health back there with the Citrus Berry. Lee Quinn Storm though, could do a lot to that Whimscop, but the Protect comes through, saves its life. <laughs> oh, and Ditto avoids the attack. Knockoff comes through, and oh, it's super oh, effective because of the do Ghost Terror type. Okay, so Incineroar is just going to make me eat my words. That knockoff, of course, onto the Terra Ghosted. Ditto is going to take it down and relieve some of the pressure here. I Electricity see. goes down, but it's just going to get brought right back up. Yeah, I think that was his plan. He didn't want to bring out that second ride on too early because he needs the electric terrain to last until the end of the game. He needs to make the most out of this Hadron engine. Because the reload on the Maridon back in its position, ready to fire. Get the... Encore at the ready and committing the discharge is a big play, but you need to do as much damage as you can here. Honestly, you had to sacrifice your Whimsicott in this instance because this will hit themselves. The Encore onto the Tornadus means that this Tornadus can only bleak Windstorm essentially maybe for the rest of the game. Discharge comes out and takes wow. care of everybody on the field. A beautifully done for Michael to take game two. Yeah, a beautiful play from Michael, locked it in. I think the one that really put him over the line is that ditto. Just watch them all fall by one by one. Last one standing, being Maridon. Good thing you had two in there, because the first one <laughs> didn't last as long. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, but good job all around there for Michael to be able to fight back in that one, get himself into that position to <laughs> essentially steal their restricted what that felt like if you're from any other esports like um taking off somebody else's weapon and then knocking them out with it yep. that's kind of what it felt like this time by here for michael taking that right on like that yeah that is a uh, very very dastardly play they're getting their hyper carry there and especially when your whole team is already built around the Maridon, just having a second Maridon makes it that much stronger because usually you're just restricted to one pokemon per team one type of that pokemon per team so having two of one really puts you at a major advantage might i say it's a menacing or an evil or a team rocket like <laughs> um strategy oh, you're here. right Stealing Pokemon. <laughs> Just stealing your own, or stealing your opponent's Pokemon and then using it against you. Normally. It depends on who you're watching. If you're watching the anime, that is a terrible strategy. If you're watching the manga, you might have a, a glimpse of... Uh, if you're watching the manga, okay. <laughs> Words are hard. But if you're of the manga, you might actually get yourself a glorious opportunity and a glorious opportunity that was there for Michael this time. Exactly. And speaking of Pokemon Adventures, I think we're just right about to adventure into our next match. Decider. It's looking to be interesting because there's so many choices you have to make here before you go in, especially with that Ditto threat. You gotta kind of play around your positioning here. You don't want to do the same positioning every time. Even if it's just switching left and right, you have to try and stay unpredictable. Yeah, this is the weird thing because, yes, it, we've seen what happens when it works, but this is all read based. You could do like a polar opposite kind of move. If you manage to read it right, let, let's say if I'm in like Carter's position where they think that I'm gonna throw in my Maridon or keep my Maridon in a slot, and you know like a switch is probably gonna happen. What happens if I swapped Tornadus into that slot instead, for example? And great, you've uh, you've stolen my Tornadus, which is extremely weak to Maridon. Like it could... Uh, Oh, you're right. You can absolutely use it against your opponent, but at the same time, it's a, it's a little bit of a trap that does need to be set up, and Michael has not fallen for any of them. That wow. ditto basically coming in off of a knockout, so you don't really get the opportunity to swap in. But we are going to see a double genie start here for Carter. Tornadus and Lander is going to hit the field at the same time alongside Maridon and Whimsicott. Yeah, they're here once again. I would say this opening start is amazing for Carter. He has two threats out on the field. The only thing threatening that Tornadus is that Maridon, but I don't think it's going to stay around long. You're probably going to commit the Volt Streak because you don't want it to be taken out so early by this Landorus. 
Yeah, do you think your Maridon is faster? Do you want to risk a Draco Meteor that misses into the Landorus? Because I'd imagine that Whimsicott and Tornadus are going to once again match Tailwinds. So the speed is going to be even in that regard. You know that Landorus is going to be priority number one. We know Carter is going to absolutely understand that that is going to be the focus. And the Protect is exactly the answer to stop anything coming its way. Yeah, there's the Tailwind getting the lead once again on this Maridon. Going for the Draco Meteor out of that gate. The Protect blocks it out. Brilliant defensive play from Carter. Okay, so what did he actually end up going for? It was the Bleakwood Storm, and Maridon missing is actually kind of catastrophic here. That is a big damage onto the Whimsicott, though. Bring it down to its Focus Sash. I like the idea, because predicting that it was going to just be Tailwind, Tailwind. But if that managed to land onto the Maridon, get a little bit of damage, get a Confusion, or not Confusion. What is Confusion work? No, I don't think so. That's for a game. But <laughs> um, just getting extra damage onto the Maridon for free would have been huge. Yeah, would have been absolutely massive. And now we're seeing another play, an encore coming out from Michael Holloway on that Tornadus. But really, what else would that Tornadus want to do here? Sure, it has Tailwind, it has Rain Dance, and it has Taunt. I guess you're trying to stop that Taunt from coming through. But other than that, Bleakwind Storm seems to be this setup that he wants to run here. Switching the Iron Hands, using that Quark Drive yeah. while the Electric Terrain is up is absolutely huge. That extra attack is going to be absolutely lethal as well. And here comes the Encore once again going to lock that Tornadus into using only Bleakwind Storms. So Carter in this instance here just completely content with the fact that I'm not going to get um, Tailwinds up right now. I'm always going to be the counter-attacker in this instance. I'm bringing out that beefy fighter that is, of course, the Iron Hands. Granted, still going to take a lot from this, but it still had its Assault Vest, so it is going to live. But can it even get an opportunity to attack now? It's going to be risky. Oh, the ditto on the Iron Hands could be massive. You'd still get the Electric Terrain boost. Try and take out your opponents. Oh, man. S start to get the upper hand there. As well as the Tailwind, you're going to start to be acting first along with a Choice Scarf. You're pretty much guaranteed to go first. Okay, but granted still, that Tornadus is locked into Bleakwind Storm. So if it does manage to hit that... Um hit that Iron Hands, it is going to do good damage. I don't think super effective anymore, but still would do some solid damage nonetheless. But if the Choice Scarf is enough speed to get past Tornadus, this could be game already. This could be a very decisive turn right here. This Maraud on Volt switches though on this Tornadus, it could be good to get the Electric Train back in the back pocket, be set up once again. It's communicating. It's keeping us all in suspense here. Yep, we're seeing the switch out on the Maridon, not even using Volt Switch, just gonna go for the full-on switch into Frigoraph. Oh, if he's predicting that this Iron Hands is gonna fake out, this is gonna be perfect timing here. Because of course the Frigoraph ability does prevent it from going down. What was the answer? It's gonna actually be a switch here from Tornadus, not gonna opt to keep this in anymore, it's firing off those bleak wind storms. It is going to be Landorus coming on through. If this was an Ice Punch coming on through, this is four times effective! Good night, Landorus! What an amazing read, and what an amazing play. It was putting pressure on both of these genies here, and they managed to take one of them out. And now, do you bring up the Maraud on this early? That Ice Punch is still going to be a major threat. Mm -hmm. Don't know what your choice is here on Carter. There's so much pressure from Michael here. That was the major threat to shut down Michael's Maridon, and with it being eliminated like that, that just opened the door for Michael to just get a little bit more relaxed and just realize he's one step closer to his win condition. Granted, there are still some threatening Pokemon here on the side of Carter, but that was a big one, big play. And whether he was predicting the switch or not, that was exactly what he needed to do. Yeah, this is absolutely massive here. Frigorath has some good moves here as well. Psychic could take out the Iron Hands. Helping Hand could boost that Ice Punch. Literally everything on the board now would be an amazing move for this Frigorath. Right now. Does this Iron Hands even get the opportunity to move though? Like, Frigorath, I know it's slow, but is it slower than Iron Hands? I don't think so. We'll have to see as this turn gets ready to move on forward here. And where is Maridon going? the least here. I feel like you target down the uh, 
for a graph, but I might be wrong, but we are going to see a terror come out. Yeah, we're seeing the terror astralization we committed on to this Maraid on Ele Terror Electric going all in on this hyper carry here. And of course, you have to. You have no other choice. You're put up your back against the wall. Ice okay. Punch going to. Oh, that terror is also defensive terror. Stops the Ice Punch. Dragon Pulse is going to come through, do a lot of damage to Frigoraf as well. And of course, now that uh, this dittoed Iron Hands should be the one go first. Oh, no, never mind. I already went first. I already attacked the uh, Maridon, which means now Carter just gets to use the Drain Punch with his Iron Hands, get a ton of this HP back, almost bring it to about half health. And with the Tailwinds gone, it should be time to uh, see Maridon coming out here. There is a bit of an opening now here for Carter if somehow they can get Tornadus on the field. Still has Tailwinds, could guarantee its ability to move first, but it would have to be done so dangerously. It's only a matter of time before it happens, though. Yeah, this is going to be an absolute slugfest here. Just seeing which Maridon will fall first will determine the fate of this game. And he needs to get this Iron Hands out here. We're having the absolute ditto across the field right now. It's just who can play it better at this point on. Absolutely. Then who's Maridon was faster? Was this a tie? I don't think we got the answer during game number one. So we'll see how this one ends up going down here. A rough spot for Michael after what looked like a promising start did get that Landorus off the field so quickly. But now a little bit of their back up against the wall. The hard swap going to be coming on through. This is going to bring Tornadus in. We know that, again, they want that, uh, they want that tailwind up. But we have to hope here for Carter that that is no... Um, ice Punch, there is no electric move going into that slot. But they hard focus Maridon, as we do see the damage is coming out here. That's gotta be Michael's Maridon firing on through with the Terra. There it is. Oh, wow! Even without the boost, it still just does so much damage. Taking out Michael's Maridon in one clean hit. And now all that's left is this Iron Hands on the field. And this Ice Punch, not oh. gonna be a crit, but it's not gonna be enough to take out Carter's Maridon. The icing on the cake, too, is that the electricity is gone. That quirk drive attack boost is gone. What felt like was a rather low effectiveness hit from the Iron Hands is going to be just that much weaker if it goes through. But it does not matter. Carter Hart is going to be able to take this best of three, two to one, in a very, very clutch fashion. An amazingly clutch fashion from Michael and Carter, both bringing this all the way to a game three. That's what you love to see. But Carter managing to win it out in the end, just playing around, bringing all these amazing plays out from nowhere, just holding on for dear life as well at some points. When it seems like it was all down and out, the swap with the Landorus was a big risky gambit, but it paid off in dividends. Absolutely. Love to see a fantastic match from these blue, or from these two players. It was cool seeing the ditto when it worked. We still did get to see the ditto work with the Iron Hands, and it did come in clutch there again with that Ice Punch, but it was not quite enough to secure the match itself here. And just a fantastic tournament so far. I'm just enjoying this. An absolutely fantastic tournament so far. And so many good teams, so many varieties of teams. We're seeing dittos like even just these little differences add up mm. to so much for each team. It's so interesting to see the different expression in moves and gameplay styles from everybody here today. But that's we're only a few rounds in here. We have even more rounds on the way. More rounds on the way, and there is actually gonna be a little bit of a commentary switch, a little bit of a special guest here coming from Buffalo, New York, of course. Your winner from yesterday's mid-season showdown, Kazuki, is going to be joining Matthias here on the commentary <laughs> desk. I'm gonna step on down for a little bit and let's just half at it, but a little bit of a mix-up as we get into the later stages of our tournament. I say later, but we still got quite a lot of Pokemon <laughs> to go here. So I do hope you all get the opportunity, get your lunch if you have not done so already, get a snack in or something, and we'll be right back here with Swiss Round 4. 